Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So in today's episode, we will be doing a small hands-on demo on the VPCs and the subnet. I hope you have already seen the videos that we have on the channel for VPC and subnet. And if you haven't, then please, I would request you to please watch them. So today's video will be only for the demo and we will be learning about how we can create a subnet and uh, as well as along with creating the VPC. So we'll have a small example on how we can do this. Okay. And we'll not be going into the depths of how we can configure the route tables or the network access control list. We will just focus on the VPC and the subnet part. And moving along in the future, we will be covering each topic one by one and we will be including the demos as well. So if you're new to the channel, then please make sure you subscribe to keep watching these videos. And if you have any suggestions, then please put them in the comment section below. So if you're ready, let's begin. So once you're logging to the AWS console that you have, you can just go to VPC by typing VPC here. Okay, so you will get isolated cloud resources when you select VPC. So just select this. And we will be welcomed to the VPC management console. So this is the place where all the magic actually happens. So AWS provides us a very good user-friendly interface to create VPCs and that is what we will be checking right now. So here you have a lot of options here like um, your VPC, subnets, route tables, internet gateways and all the things that you can create from this uh, management console. But the thing that we are going to create is a VPC. So you can just click on your VPCs. And when you create your account, this comes with a default VPC and and VPC hyphen F8888 A90 is my default VPC. And the cider box that has been associated by default is 172.31.0.0 slash 16. Okay, so if I have to create a VPC, then I have to just click on this create VPC button. And here it will ask me for a couple of options. Okay, so the first thing is we have to provide it a name. So I'll give new VPC. Okay, and the cider block actually what we had already discussed was the range of the cider block that you can provide is going to be between 16 and 28. Okay, so I can provide it 16 right now. So 10.0.0.0 slash 16 and no IPv6 cider block. So I don't want to give anything and the tenancy that you see here. This will decide whether all the instances that you're going to create here, the EC2 instances will go as default or it will go into the dedicated. We don't want any dedicated instance right now. So we will be selecting default. And if you want to read about this, you can click on info here. So here it tells us that you can run instances in your VPC on single tenant dedicated hardware. Okay or dedicated hardware. So select dedicated to ensure that instances launched in this VPC are dedicated tenancy instances uh, regardless of the tenancy attributes specified at launch. So even though you specify any type of tenancy, the default actually will go as now as if you have selected dedicated, then it will go to the dedicated tenancy. Okay. And select default to ensure that instances launched in the VPC use the tenancy attribute specified at launch. So regardless of what you have specified uh, in launch, if you have specified dedicated here, it will go to the dedicated one because the default tenancy for the VPC is set to dedicated. Okay. So this is one thing that is very important for you to understand. And if you don't want to incur huge costs, don't select dedicated in the beginning while creating the VPC. Okay. We may never know what is our current requirement. Okay. And if you have the specific requirement and your architect already has told you, or you are the architect and you know that every instance that you're going to get for your VPC is going to be dedicated, then please go ahead and make a decision and use this tenancy. But if you don't have any clue regarding what type of instances are you going to host later on in the future, then just select default. Okay. And I just don't want to give any other tag. The tag is already specified name and the name that I had given was my new VPC and I don't need to add any more tags. So the one thing that you need to be very clear is you have to specify between 16 and 28. So if I go to this website, IP address calculator guide, and if I supply this side block that I'm going to use, it's like 16. And if I hit calculate, it can, it will tell me that the total number of IPs that are going to get, you are going to get is 65,536. 
but the first one will start from 10.0.0.0 and the last IP will be 10.0.255.255 okay and this actually we can divide into multiple CIDR blocks okay so the next thing that you're going to do is just click on create VPC so once you have created the VPC you will get a VPC ID okay so this will be mapped with your name and if you can see here the state is actually available DNS host names are disabled DNS resolution is enabled and the default tenancy that we have is default the DHCP option is already set and the route and the network ACL is already been created so these two will be created by default so these are the default route tables and the default uh, NACLs or the network access control list uh, I can go here and right click on this one and see so the local zone that I have I think the target and the destination will be set to the CIDR in the route table so if you see here if I go to the routes so see as I told you in the diagram also before the destination will be 10.0.0.0 slash 16 and the target will be local okay so it will point to itself to the same VPC okay so here you can see the IPv4 CIDR is this one 0.0.0 slash 16 and we don't have any IPv6 CIDRs okay so if I want to take action so I can actually edit CIDRs I can create flow logs as I told you, you can send it to CloudWatch or you can send it to S3. You can also edit DNS host names and DNS resolution as well. You can manage the tag and you can delete it as well. So if I click on edit CIDR, so if I want to give another CIDR block, I can just choose 10.z1.0.0 slash 16. Because when I showed you here, this actually, these are the two things that are going to change. So the last two numbers that are going to change. Okay. And you cannot have one more CIDR block which is actually trying to bifurcate the first CIDR that you have okay so you cannot have this so the only way that we are going to have it is like this 10.1.0.0 slash 16 okay so once I have this I can just click on save and I can create this if I want I can create a few more like uh, I can create up to a maximum of five I think so this is the way you can add more CIDRs so this becomes your primary CIDR and this becomes your secondary CIDR and this was the part that I wanted to show you. I'll not add any more ciders because this is sufficient for us. I'll just remove this and I'll just close this. So I don't want to add it. And the thing about ciders actually, the IPv6 ciders, you can create a new one, but I don't want to have any IPv6 ciders as of now. So, but if you are interested, you can, you can just click on add new IPv6 cider and you can choose Amazon provided cider block or you can have a IPv6 CIDR block owned by me and you can choose a pool. Amazon already provides you a pool of CIDR blocks. So you can choose and you can just click on select CIDR and create it. But I will not create it right now. So you can just close it. So the default CIDR that I had, I did not give any name to this one. I can just give it a default name. Okay. So default VPC just for clarity. So this is my default VPC and this is my new VPC that we just now created. Okay. So congratulations, you have created your first VPC now and the CIDR block that you have associated is 10.0.0.0 16. So the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to create subnets. So click on subnets on the left hand side below your VPC, you will find subnets. So this is the default VPC subnet. You can see here it's written default VPC. We don't want to disturb this. We have to create our own subnets for the new one that we have created. So how we can create it? We can just click on create subnet and we can create a subnet here. I'll just write the name subnet A public. The VPC that I want to choose is this one, my new VPC. Availability zone is AP South 1A. Okay, so I can give the CIDR block now 10.0.0.0 slash 24. So this exactly comes between the CIDR block that I have slash 16 slash 28. So this should be sufficient for me. So just you're going to create on this one. Click on create. This should be created. Well and good. Congratulations. And now we are going to create one more. So it will be subnet B public. And I'll choose the VPC again. And this one will be 10.0.1.0 slash 24 making sure that they don't collide between each other i'll just create one and i'll create one more subnet that i have so it will be subnet c 
public and this will be in vpc and i will make this inside ap south 1b okay so two subnets i have provided it in one availability zone and the other one i am going to provide it in 1b so this will be 10.0.16.0/24 okay so the first one was 0 the second one was 1 the third one was 16 so now this is also created so 251 ips 251 ips and 251 ips so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create the private subnets so subnet And this one will be 10.0.32.0 slash 24. So this is also fine. So these are not colliding with anyone. So we have the private subnet and three public subnets. Now we can go ahead and create one more. And the VPC will be new. And this will be the second AZ. And I'll give it 10.0.0 okay let's suppose i give 32.0 slash 24 let's see what happens okay this will overlap the existing cider okay so if i give 16 it will overlap the existing cider okay okay so i have already given 32 so if suppose it starts from this so if suppose my cider actually started from this how you can calculate is slash 24 okay calculate this so the last ip will end at 32.255 okay so we have to create something after this so what i can do is i can create 33 okay 33.0 slash 24 it will get created yes so every time that you feel like you are going to crash on some of the subnets that you have already created just look at this ip cider block that you already have and look at the last ip that you have created and you can give like one value after this so like after 32 i have given 33 so that also works so not a problem because it falls under the same range uh, between 255 to 255 so it doesn't matter okay so now as you can see here 251 2d so every time actually we wanted to calculate slash 24 we always imagine that we'll get 256 ips but we are getting 251 ips so i hope you remember we already had discussed this before that AWS itself reserves five IP addresses and it only gives us minus five IPs based on the CIDR value that we have and those will be only usable hosts and the five the other five will not be usable so if you haven't uh, gone through that session then please go through that session as well I have provided the link in the description as well so don't worry about that it's very simple so just remember for now that anytime that you have to decide on creating CIDRs or decide on creating subnets and assign ciders you must remember that five ips from that list will not be usable and the way i actually decide how i want to create subnet is basically like let's suppose i created a vpc with cider block of 10.0.0.0 slash 16 then what i can do is i have the flexibility to now create my cider blocks or the subnets that i want within the availability that i want from any possible value between 16 and 28 okay so the first subnet that i wanted to create was subnet a pub and the cider block that i wanted to create was 10.0.0.0 slash 24 okay and that actually gives me 256 ips and that is fine for me okay so if suppose i want to create the next one and i can basically go here and actually and i can just paste it here and calculate what is going to be the first and the last value of the cider block so if I have the first IP as 10.0.0.0 and the last IP is 255, I can anyways change the second value of this and create a second cider. So I will go ahead and change the second value as 1 and I can create another 256. So if I take this again and I try to calculate the value for the first and the last IP. So here also I get 256 IPs and it starts from 10.0.1.0 and ends with 10.0.0. 1.255 so i will create the second subnet that i have for the public one with 10.0.16.0 slash 24 so let's suppose i have this ip for the cider block then i can just go ahead and paste it here and if this was my cider block and i had to create any third 
cider i can actually create it from 10.0.17 or 15 or it depends on me it should not be like 10.0.16.1 or something okay it cannot be like that it cannot be between 0 and 255 so the next value that i wanted to give for the cider block was for the private one so i, I plan to give it like 10.0.32.0 slash 24 so if suppose i calculate this again so if i just paste it here the next value that i wanted to give was the first value that i got here was 10.0.32.0 so the last ip that i'm getting is 10.0.24.255 because we have only 256 ips so so the last range will be 255 and then the side block actually changes so i cannot have something like 10.0.32.2 as one of the ciders because it will not work okay so for that reason itself i chose 10.0.33.0 okay so let's suppose i i wanted to give you the same example here so i i already told you that i chose 10.0.33.0 slash 24 and it worked for me and just for your satisfaction if you want to know whether this works or not if i have to choose between 10.0.32.5 and i'll try to create a subnet just see okay what happens so i have to create a subnet here i i'll choose 10.0.32.5 k6 24 doesn't matter try to create this it will not so it must be a valid side because slash 24 already covers 0 to 255 ips and then if i wanted to create one like 33 as it is already created it will tell me that the cider block is going to overlap but now if i want i can create a 34 yes it will not throw me any errors if i want to create i can create 31 it will not throw me any error between 0 to 255 as many numbers are there i can create one because my cider block actually allows it my bpc cider block actually allows me to but i cannot overlap two cider blocks which are already created and i cannot bifurcate both of them by creating one more so that is not advisable so that is why you cannot create so while creating you can prepare an excel sheet like me what i have created and and you can actually make a list of all the ciders that you want and you can actually determine how many host count that you want and remember this thing that this will basically be 251 so it will be 251 it will not be 256 because five ips are already reserved so this will be the actual host count so this will be actual so this is the actual host count so don't worry about this so you have to remember that even though your host count remains 256 your actual host count that will be usable is 251 so you can see all the information that you want here for the vpc but the additional information that you can also watch is for your network access control list so here what happens is as i already told you before that a network access control list will act as a security group for your subnets isn't it so you can see the subnet associations here you can see associated with five subnets so when you create a subnet it gets associated with your default NACL or the network access control list and you can see the subnet associations here so you will find that all the subnets that you have created both private and public are already associated to this network access control list and now coming back to this once again if you go to the subnets so if i click on this one yeah now you're able to see the second vpc that we have created so you can just click on this and you will only see the subnets that are associated to the newly created vpc and you might tell me that Pathologic, we have discussed all of this. This is well and good. We have created the VPC and the subnet. You told that there's my public subnet and uh, these two are my private subnet, but I didn't find any difference between both of them. We created them the same way. So first of all, I want to assure you that we will be covering this. And I have already told you before, a subnet which actually has a route to the internet gateway is considered to be a public subnet. And the private routes to the local vpc okay so this is the two difference the main difference that you need to remember and that is what we will be setting up in the sessions to come for now we are just going to focus on the vpc and subnet part so we have done that we have created the subnet and we have created the vpc so this will be it for the demo for today and i know that some of the people actually fear creating these vpcs and subnets thinking that they might incur a huge amount of money for their creation in the free uh, account as well in the free tier account as well but don't worry about that for creation you don't need to pay anything only for the resource usage you're going to pay so don't worry about that and you can just create it and delete it that's what i'm going to do right now so don't worry about that create your free tier account start practicing this is how you're going to get the hands-on experience on 
how we are actually creating VPCs and subnets and all the other things that we are doing. And uh, the next thing that we wanted to do was just click on these, go to actions and delete subnets. Yes. Are you sure that you want to delete these subnets? Yes, I want to delete them. Just click on delete. Yes. And if suppose you want to delete the VPC and you're scared that you might incur some of the cost, then you can just go ahead and click on my VPC or select my VPC or the one that you've created and go to actions and delete the VPC. So just type delete and make sure you have deleted the one that you've recently created, not the default one, because you might have some running instances there. So anyways, it will tell you that you cannot delete it, but make sure that you don't delete these things. Okay. So just the one that you've created newly delete and just type confirm delete, then just click on delete again. Yes. Now the VPC that we had created is now deleted. The subnets that we had created is also deleted. We have cleaned up everything. So we don't have to worry about anything right now. So that's it from my side today. I hope you like the demo for the VPCs and the subnets and uh, and we will be covering a lot more in the coming session. So please do subscribe to the channel. And, and if you're new to the channel, then you are most welcome. And uh, I hope you find these topics and sessions interesting. So that's it from my side today. Until next time, it's Pythalic signing off.